Welcome to Turning Tuesday! This week, my wife challenged me to make a pointer stick. The idea is to provide distance, allowing her to point at computer screens, training staff without having to be in their personal space. This week, I definitely made plenty of mistakes. Being longer than something I normally turn, it definitely added a different level of difficulty. So, while I was working on this, I pulled out the skew chisels. You'll see throughout the video, I do swap between. I also pulled out the spindle gouge. This being a longer piece, there was several points where I had to address different difficulties caused by that. So, during the video, you'll hear me talk about chattering, as well as making several mistakes. I will stop and highlight them, and I will talk about them and how I overcame them. You may notice here that I moved the tool a little too fast and caused a spiral pattern. I then dipped my hand to check if I was actually running at full speed. I was, therefore I was just moving the tool too fast. So I slow down, come back for a second pass, and as you can see that's come and cut absolutely gorgeously. Slowing down now to check this section for round. I rest the back of the tool on it to feel for bounces. And when I do that, I know that it's not round, so I need to have a good look to see just how far out it is. At this point, I had a quick look and noticed some of these nail holes, and they were quite interesting. But as you can tell, I'm almost there, so back to it. Having a quick look, and I'm still not quite round. I take this opportunity to go and sharpen my skew, getting ready for the details. You may notice I'm doing a little bit of a swivel here. That is to create a slight curvature to the center of the blade. This is intentional because I want to avoid having the tip and the base of the tool towards the fine details. I've noticed this reduce a lot of my catches when I do this. So I'm taking off the rough edges now, and then I will switch over to the skew. When I switch over to the skew, my main goal is trying to get it nice and smooth and start to get some of the design in. You notice I go straight in with that aggressive cut with the skew, and that's purely because of that curvature. It really allows me to go in with a little bit less fear. If you haven't taken the chance, please like, comment, and subscribe. Right about here, I start hearing that chatter to appear. So I start working towards the end where it's a bit more solid, thinking that it's just a force from the center of the wave. I also slowed down a little bit. So this is in high speed, but I have slowed down a lot. If you listen carefully, you might really hear that chatter as it goes across there. I decide to stop and have a look at just how bad the chatter is in real time. As I stop it here, you'll notice that spiral. Now this can be caused by several things. In this case, I'm pretty sure it was caused by the tailstock coming a little bit loose or more to the point, excess pressure on the wood has made it wiggle in the spike that's in the end of the wood. 
So I do fiddle with a few different things throughout the process here. So I'll tighten the motor. I will tighten the tailstock. I'll switch tools and I will slow down. All of which can help in fixing it. You'll notice here I'm now tightening it a little bit and that most definitely helped a little bit. So, I've called this section Banjo Twang. That's because I impact the wood because I moved it while I was turning on the lathe. That's a mistake and a not one you should do. It's not sensible and it was silly of me to do that. Won't be the last time I do that either. That can result in an absolute disaster of your entire project falling apart. Just here I decide to start defining where the handle will be and to try and help with that chatter because I am now dead center of the wood and it is being caused by a bit of bowing. I am now resting my hand on the back of the wood as it's turning and I'm pressing down with my thumb on the inside of the tool which is holding both fairly close together and it gets a fairly nice cut. As you may be able to tell, I've now decided where I'm going to put the handle and where I'm going to do some fine detail. So now I start work on whittling down to a point. tightening up the chuck there as it could be another source of the vibration. Right, so tighten the motor and I've now just decided that no, no it is just because it's the centre of the wood. over to the skew so that I can get a really nice smooth taper. I could do it with the other tools but I really prefer to do it with the skew. Now just here my tool decided to fall. Given that that was probably just me not resting it nicely. I don't have a system for mounting them. I do need to work on that. But when I did that, I also caused myself to get a catch because I jumped and lost focus for half a second. Slowing it down here, you'll notice up towards the tip there, there is a nice chunk missing. You may also notice that I sound a little bit like Darth Vader. That's because I always wear a face shield and a mask. I use a P2 respirator so that I don't get any issues from the dust.
if I've gone far enough to get past that catch that I did earlier. Now here I'm doing what I did before, where I can get a little bit deeper and I can push down with the tool. some refinements on the tip now. One problem with having a curvature, I was missing the bottom of the blade there. Moving back up towards the handle now, and I get a beautiful little catch here. And that's because I went in with the tip, and I was not in a position to argue with the lathe. I decided to change tools here over to the spindle gouge. In that process I realized that it's a little bit too big for what I wanted to do at that time. Jump back over to the roughing gouge and try and get a idea of where I'm headed with this. All these decisions are on the fly, there was no pre-made decisions, I'm just working with the wood and what it wants to do.
That was a nice little catch. Try and work on that feed. I still see that spiral spinning around. More catches. off the end of the tool rest there you may notice there's nice and now big chunk in the middle of it just noticed that I had that catch there so first thing I'm gonna do is try and flatten that out flatten that out get an even sound and then I'll try and curve it again over to the handle now. I've got the details about where I want them. Anything else can be fine-tuned after. Right now I'm trying to focus on getting the handle size down to something my wife will enjoy. Notice on the far end the tail stock is no longer moving. That means that far end is currently not supported. Tighten that up to stop the squeaking. I'm on my spindle gouge and I decide to do some shear cuts to try and get some smoothing as well as reduce the size of the end of the handle. very close to that chuck so I am a little concerned. A few years back I had a friend that injured her hand quite badly as a result of catching the tool in the chuck so I'm very cautious about how I handle the chuck. So I had to put a little bit of super glue in the holes. Now I'm not sure if these are nail holes or if they were caused by bugs and they've mineralized. But the black is mineralization. I just don't know if that's come from a nail or if that's come from bugs dragging wood in over time. Now, I've gone 
back up to the far end and I'm working on smoothing it out and fixing up that catch that I had when I dipped off the end of the tool dress. But now I'm doing shear cuts with the spindle gouge and that's cleaning up quite nicely. Time for another skews sharpen. This time you'll notice I really get the curvature happening. Coming in at the end here, and I immediately scare the crap out of myself. As I was saying before, I've had a friend that's injured herself, and I very much had concerns in that moment that I may be about to do the same thing. Moving on to the sanding. This is where I will fine tune most of the mistakes that I've made and hopefully get a beautiful result. Well, I know it's a beautiful result. My wife really enjoys it. She's taken it to work and is using it. As much as I tried to add some pretty factor to it, it was about the utilitarian factor of being able to demonstrate where to click on a computer screen. I'm going to back off the tailstock now and hopefully smooth out the tip so there's no point and there's no result in a hole from where the tailstock was rested. I also lose my focus here and break it off. Couldn't have said it better myself. Shit. Having only done the first pass of sanding, I needed to find another way to deal with this. So how I decided to deal with this was mounting some sandpaper with a hook and loop in a Jacob's chuck and go to town on the ends of it. Then I had the problem of how was I going to get some finish on it. So I decided to tighten up my chuck, put some foam in there, get my mandrel saver from my pen turning and put the tip in there with some padding 
try not to cause any additional. Now this does work. You'll notice throughout this, the vibration and the offset gets worse and worse. But that's fine. It still sanded up perfectly. I'm also playing with the uh, flappy bits. decided to take this figure it's higher as I'm not putting a finish on it as such I am gonna put some beeswax which is what you see me putting on now so I've got the lathe spinning so it generates a little bit of heat melt it on there and I'll grab a microfiber cloth and soak it in I'm just watching that transformation for that red gum it just absolutely starts shining so the point here is move slowly. I am in fast forward, so I'm just moving slowly, heating up the wax, letting it soak into the wood. Never wrap the microfiber cloth around your hand because if it gets caught, it will cause damage. I'm just trying to get it in there, in those holes, nice and deep. As you can tell, it's nice and warped. It's gone absolutely everywhere. So now I've got the problem again of the end. I decide to grab a bit of foam and polish up the ends. And then I'm like, hmm, it's not enough wax. So I add some wax on there, and as you can tell, that's done the treat beautifully. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please consider like, comment, and subscribe. I really would like to know what you'd have done or if you've got a better way of doing this. Some close-up macro shots of this. I really hope you enjoy. Absolutely gorgeous figure throughout this wood. Thank you for watching.